Hi, I'm Carl from The Woodshop TV, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a three-sided bowl. This is the live stream that we did on our main channel on Monday. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. The chat that's running along the side of the video is from the live stream. So if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Let's get started. Help support the companies that support our community. What we're gonna do today is take this block of wood here. I squared it up and we're gonna make a three-sided bowl out of it. So I did a demo over at the beach um, this weekend and they left it up to me. So I'd never turned one of these before. So I figured why not better do it live than uh, anything else. And it came out pretty good. So I'm gonna do another one. And so basically, all you really need to do is make sure it's square so that when you get done, your wall thickness is the same. If this is your first time here and you have any questions, please throw them up in the chat. My wife Robin is on the phone with me, so she will relay them. And then after the stream's over, it will be up on the Q&A channel if you want to go back and, and look at anything or if you came in, came in late and, and missed something, it'll be up on that channel probably tomorrow. All right, how's everybody doing? Everybody doing well? Have a good weekend. All right, so this is walnut. I'll switch cameras here in just a second. So what you want to do is uh, take your spur center out of the, the headstock. It's going to go right in there like that. At my live center here, I pulled the pin out of the center of it. So you basically just put it, pick two of the points. I have a little bit of a crack right here in this one. So I picked these two points so that when we're done, these points out here will be left and we'll get rid of that that crack hopefully just like that all right let me let me switch cameras so we can see that and we'll go a little closer view there we go all right so I had it in there just like that I kind of lined it up just to make sure it was gonna get in there all right so this part right here I have a couple little cracks down in here but we're gonna put a tenon down here and then turn around and then grab it in the in the chuck. So you get it locked in there. So on something like this, it's kind of like making a natural edge bowl. If you can get the speed up, it cuts a lot better than if you're, you know, have it going slow where you're just kind of going kunk, 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 kunk around it. So if you can get the speed speed up, I'm gonna probably do it around 1500 or so to start out with, but it looks pretty cool just spinning around there once you get it spinning. And on something like this, um, I'm, I may turn on the light, but it's much easier if you have a contrasting color behind it. So this is walnut. If I had a white piece of paper behind it, you'd be able to see the ghosting a lot easier than just doing it like this and use a light on it. And that way you can see exactly where you're, where you're cutting. But let's go ahead and bring this around here. And we will spin the lathe hand first so we don't turn it on and hit the tool rest. All right. No, there's no spurs. It's uh, this is I pulled the pin out of this and it's just stuck right into the headstock there. Same way I did it in the in the demo. Actually, the only thing I did different in the demo was I put the tenon back here and then I after I got to thinking about it, it's just much easier to work from this side and put the tenon down here. Then we can flip it around and grab it in the, in the chuck. So that's what we're going to do. So basically, I'm going to shape the outside of it a little bit too and put the tenon down here before I before I flip it around. All right, face shield. Definitely put your face shield on. Let me clean this up. Stay out of the danger zone. Yes. Although I don't know, it's a little hard on this one. Need to, need to be a little bit in the danger zone. All right. Camera's good. Everybody can hear me. Microphone's on. All good. 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 I'm gonna put that this down here so in case something happens. I can turn it off. And I am going to start with a bowl gouge here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock these corners here off. 
Um, you've probably seen, seen these before. There's a couple different ways you can do it. You can actually leave the corners here and here on and create a, you know, a little box. You can, this doesn't have to be a bowl. You can make boxes, box out of it. You can do different, different sizes to make a vase like this. I've seen quite a few of these, just different, different shapes too. So those definitely, you know, kind of, kind of open on what, what you can do with it. But I, just for this, I'm going to knock the corners off and make a bowl. Hey Scott, how you doing? We still don't have the trailer back. I know, I know. Hopefully soon. working my way up don't want to get too far out away from the tool rest and just try and use your hand down here on the tool rest and just try and keep that cut even because you're cutting a lot of air come down right where these points are and shape the outside of it too all all at the same time on the tools Michael Michael man you have been doing some beautiful work man I love those pendants you've been been making it awesome So you can, you can kind of see, so I have these, these little spots right here. So we need to get rid of, rid of all of those and make it smooth. So I have my tenon down there. That's all good. Might uh, shape it a little bit more before we go, but looking good. Uh, um, w w I, I don't know exactly, but but it it will be coming i promise we'll we're just uh just just kind of uh waiting on jason and 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 braxton has been working a lot too so we will get it done though Do I use, hang on a sec, I'm sorry. Do I use what wax? Liming wax, no, I don't know what that is. Liming wax. I, I don't know what that is, Rob. Liming wax. Let me 
bring that in that tenon in just a little bit more. Oh, I I have not used that. Liming wax. Huh. Um, that I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what he means about a weird spur. It, Andrew, it was a, yes, yes. So, um, it, I put it right into where the Morris taper goes. So it, I made basically, it was like a five and a quarter inch, uh, square block. So one point goes into the th uh, just your headstock there and the other point goes into the live center with the the pin taken out um honestly if you want to make one of these and and cut the ends off or cut two of the points off you could use a spur center and and the live center it, it really doesn't matter it's just this kind of makes it go a little faster i guess not messing messing with that all right, I'm going to use a parting tool here and bring this part down. And then we'll just use a hand saw to cut it off. Oh, okay. Thanks, Rob. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I've never, never used it before. Back this off. Hang on one sec. The dogs are going off. I can't hear the ambulance going by. <laughs> Can you use the pin mandrel on this? I'm not sure. Um, I that that I don't know. Huh? Um, I don't. The, the um, I don't. Uh, as far as vacuum pumps pumps go the only one i have is uh from chef work kits it's the easy vac i'm reading it right now I'm trying to read it easy vacuum system right um it's from uh craig at chef work kits is is the one that makes that one and i know uh, peter brown just got one got one too from uh uh i think it's best vacuums or vacuum changer hey drew how you doing <laughs> jamie this is is my chuck by easy wood all right so i'm gonna gonna clean it up just a little bit more i have a couple little tool marks down here and then we'll then we'll start hauling it out. And the reason I brought that back up was just because you can clean out a ton of this before you have to have to go pull the pull the tailstock away. All right, crank that up. And it's running about two thousand RPMs right now. And I grabbed the wrong tool.
Yeah, Rob, I think you'll be very happy with it. Oh, nice, nice. That's awesome. I, th I think you'll have a lot of fun, man. It's, it is, I don't know. I, I really enjoy it, just being able to come out here and, you know, do something you know that you you love and be creative with it and you can finish stuff you know finish a project really quick too so all right i'm so that's awesome peter awesome very cool all right i'm gonna so i'm just gonna take out a bunch of the material here um pretty quick and then we'll pull that out away. I'll bring this back down here. Is there what? Yes, walnut is a uh, is a great great wood to turn for a beginner or, or anybody. It's. Uh, it's a hardwood, but it's it's still pretty soft. So um, it turns really nice, finishes really well. You can see it cuts really nice. The horizon. That's a good question. Um, you asked me where I'm looking when when I'm shaping something. So um, it's this is a little bit different just hauling this out. But so when you're standing here and this thing's spinning around and you're shaping it, you look up here. It's you can you can get a get it to a better shape, get it to flow better if you're looking up here. Don't look right down at the tool where you're cutting. Um, look up here you can see how the how the shape is forming so on something like this it's it's different you just clean out the inside of it but when you're looking at it always look at the horizon what you know I come in I get my tool set down I start to make the cut and then my eyes go right up to the top of it here Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Well, thanks for stopping by. So you can you can see that somebody had a question too about walnut. It cuts really nice. Um, it just uh, it's a real, really nice wood to turn. I have a little bit of a crack in it, so I'm trying to get down past that. Um, I don't, they're not any better or any worse. As far as easier to use, um, maybe a little bit. Um, there's a lot less of a learning curve on them. But there's still, you know, a learning curve. You just need to make sure they're sharp. Um, you can see I'm just kind of cleaning this thing out. It's you don't need a grinder or sharpening stone with the or a grinding jig with the carbide. So I would say if you're just starting out, they're easier because you don't have to learn how to ride the bevel and everything. But I don't, they, they do exactly the same thing as gouges, but they're just, just shaping the wood. Alright, 
I'm gonna bring this little point down in the center here and knock that off. Then we can pull the tailstock away. So, get this out of the way. Uh, yes, for especially doing the insides of bowls and stuff, if you're if you're coming in and and uh, just you know turning green wood or something and trying to get out the majority of it, I'll use the use the big one. Um, but what I find when you get down to the bottom and you're coming across the bottom and then you get to the to to the side where it starts to come up, it's much easier to use that little teeny cutter. Um, the bigger one seems to grab a little bit at that one little point there. So you don't want to have your, your uh, um, bowl down to thickness and have it grab, grab all of a sudden. So I always, always use the little one. And it's, you know, um, to be honest, it, I, I guess if it's green wood, you can take out a lot more material faster, but you can see how fast it's going. I mean, it's not, uh, we're not, uh, it was Rob, I'll put it in the mail. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes really fast, so it's, I don't know. I guess you could clean it out a little faster with the big one and then come in with with this one. It, I sometimes do that too. Turning wet. Oh, that was that was awesome. Frank did Frank did an amazing job with that. No, I haven't thought about it. All right, I need to turn the light on for just a second. I'm not sure how well it shows up in the camera, but as soon as you put that light on it, you can see exactly where the where the piece is. So you can see that ghosting on it. Not how, sure how well that shows up, but yeah. So if you're doing the doing something like this or natural edge bowl or something, use the light. It it really helps out. So I'm gonna take one more pass and bring that down a little little bit thinner. Uh, do I ever use what? E shine. What is E shine? Is that Captain Eddie's shine juice? Oh, like oh triple E. Oh. <laughs> no, I've ne I've never used used triple E. Any tips for getting started on YouTube? Yes, I have a huge tip. Grab your phone and start making videos. It, it really don't don't worry about it. You get get better the more you do it. Um, a lot of the like moving shots that we put in our videos are just off my cell phone, so you don't need fancy camera none of it I know you, you know might be a little nervous at first uh, to be honest with you if you go watch like some of my first couple videos you're not going to make they're not going to be any worse than that trust me it's impossible um, and 
I've been doing it since 07. And I still feel awkward coming out here, standing here talking to the camera. So don't, uh, don't hesitate. It's I don't, I don't use a sanding sealer, um, I, on anything, um, I just, I, I don't know, I just never got into it, but, uh, you definitely, definitely can. Uh, I know Mike Walt uses sanding sealer all the time on stuff. Add a little bit of a ridge right there. So you, I mean, you were asking about using the big cutter too. You can see just how fast it, it's taking this down. Thank you, Chris. I'm not sure is it how to take that. Is it, they were that bad? <laughs> Trust me, I know that. They were that bad. Hey, Michael, have a good one, man. See ya. Yeah, just uh, if you just want to get into, you know, doing videos and stuff, just, just try and, you know, make make something you know interesting that people want to see you know I uh, um, I think that's probably you know the most important thing keep it interesting don't uh, you know don't spend a lot of time explaining every little detail um, you know just just uh, show the you know the basic stuff um you know and i, I and that's kind of why we started doing the live thing was because i know people have questions and want to learn stuff but like for the basic videos it's you know just kind of giving you ideas of, on stuff to do so it's you don't have to show every, every single grit you go through when you're sanding i'm, I'm constantly moving the camera around when we're filming so that it's not you know just one shot or one angle thank thank you very much OJ thank you sir appreciate that all right saw that I think it's actually, I've done quite a few of the <clears throat> the natural edge bowls where you just have bark <clears throat> bark out here. And I think these are actually easier to make. They really, you, as long as you get the speed up, it, it cuts smooth. Um, I really didn't have, have any issues with it. Let's go ahead and figure out exactly where the bottom is and I'll cut into it a little bit there. So we're right there <clears throat> and we're right there so I'm just gonna put a pencil line down here so we've got a little bit of room on the bottom when we cup it out we'll just use a parting tool come in a little bit um, if you wanted to make a box like this um, all you would do was come in here with a uh, like a <laughs> thank you Jamie thank you very much sir um, come in here with the parting tool and just create a little little uh, lip there little ledge and then that way when you make a lid it would fit right on right on that ledge all the way around and I've seen I've seen those too so you, a lot of little little things you can do with it and I have seen some bigger ones, you know, that people have made vases out of, which is, look really cool. I've been turning uh, about 23 years. 
Does, does that age me? That's... When I started this, the dimensions were, uh, it was five and a quarter, five and a quarter square. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Steve. All right. So, I have a little lip. I probably can't see it in the camera, but it's just a little lip there where it goes down into the bottom. I'm just going to round that over a little bit. There we go. So, as far as sanding it up, uh, you need to sand all the little little wings when the lay's off, and it, and then these parts right here too. Grab some sandpaper. Oh, it is um, the audio. What is it? It is, hang on, let me see, right there, there it is, that little guy right there. I got it off of uh, Amazon, I think it was 35 bucks, can you see that? Hopefully you can see it. Yeah, I think it was, I think it was $35 or something. And it, yeah, it works good, it has like a noise count, count, canceling thing on it. Um, I need, hang on one sec, I need to grab another grid, and I don't know where they, where it all went, I've been cleaning up, trying to get everything cleaned up out here, there we go, Jared from Lizard Blanks just came over, and he dropped off, a, um, what was it? It's Beauty and the Beast. It's a, uh, the rose, and we're turning, turning it, uh, thing for him for it. So. <laughs> yes, Chad's Chad from Mancrafting. Jamie's my uh, agent. Um, I don't. Um, I don't. I mean, if it's a vase or something, I'll sand down in there a little ways, but I I don't get too carried away trying to sand something you're, you're never going to see or be able to touch. Oh. I think, uh, all right. I'm sorry, I'll turn that off so you can see. Um, yeah, just, just make sure you have all the little tool marks out before you, you're going to put oil or something on it. So, And you have to sand these little little spots by hand. Even if you have like a small void or something in a piece of wood, if you turn the lathe on and, and try and sand it, let's get this out of the way. 
what it does is just sands one side of it. So if you have a void in a, in a vase or something and you're coming around, it's just going to sand this one side of it right there and then miss this edge. Even if you go forward and back, it's going to make it look weird. So whenever I have a void or something like that, I, I hand sand around that. Before I turn the lathe on. The Sandman. I know. Everybody's always picking on me about Sandy. Why does everybody hate Sandy? What's, what's wrong with Sandy? We could do a whole show on sanding tips. always trying not to sand. No. Then this I always run through the first grid or so dry to make sure I get all the little torn grain out, all the tool marks. And then before I start putting on the on the wax. So just kind of inspect it. Mm, well, it, I, I don't think it's walnut dust. I think it's any dust. Any any of the dust is hard on your lungs. It shouldn't, you know. That's kind of, none of it really irritates me that much. I mean, it's not good, but it never... You don't get allergies from it, but that's kind of why I started using the wax is to eliminate all that. And that's why I started sanding with, with wax because it gets all that fine dust out. So I don't think it's, it's the walnut dust. I think anything is bad, bad for you. Um, it's, um, some of the other woods, a lot of people have allergies to like, um, cocobolo or, uh, rosewood and things like that. A lot of people have severe allergies to those. So it's, you know, you definitely want to either not turn it if you're allergic to it or, or wear a respirator. Yes, so it, um, I'm just kind of kind of basically rushing through this to be honest with you. But if I was gonna gonna finish finish this piece, if it was one that I was you know really wanted to do, I would get in there. I would use my little power sander to make sure everything was out of it. Um, you want to make sure all of the tool marks are gone, and the only thing scratches you have on it when you start you going through the rest of your grits are from the sandpaper. So I think that one I just just used was 120. That's all you want to see. So I have a magnifying glass, a light here. I would go in and inspect every little detail to make sure that all the tool marks and every all little torn grain everything was gone before I before I put the oil on. Once you start putting the oil on, it's a lot harder to um go back and get, you know, a big tool mark out or something like that. So I always check it out but we're just kind of good thank you yeah you want to Yeah, definitely wear, if it gives you sinus infection or anything, it's like wear a mask <laughs> with it. But yeah, I don't don't really have an allergy to, to in, any of them. I think the, the I did, uh, what did I turn? I turned Black Locust, and that was the only one that 
I really kind of, the next day it was like I was stuffed up. Um, I definitely, definitely felt that one. But other than that, so it's all about the same. And again, even even when you're sanding with the wax, just do these little spots right here by hand and the and the wings. Um, I, I don't know, Joe. I hadn't gotten that far. I'm trying to get it done first. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I was just turning it, you know, for a demonstration. I wasn't. It'll probably go on the shelf of misfit turnings over there. Uh, it doesn't. It has a dial on it, the robust. This one, uh, the American Beauty and the uh, uh, Sweet 16 just have a dial on them. So, it, I mean, it's just from 1 to, to 10. I think Brett should have went to 11 just because everything should always be 11. Um, but so if you're on three, you know, you're at, at 800 and, and you just know, you know, as what they are. It comes with a chart and everything. It tells you what, what, what the RPM at that setting is. Uh, the wax sanding gets rid of all the dust. So instead of having, you probably saw there for a minute, there was just fine dust floating around the air, and it eliminates all of that. So, and that's really the reason I do it, is uh, I, I like the satin finish opposed to like a glossy finish. So it's a win-win. I get to sand with no dust, and I get the finish I want. If you want a high gloss finish, just dry sand, and then you can put you know, polyurethane or something like that over the top of it. Okay, yeah, uh, just a regular paper dust mask isn't going to do the job there. Uh, I would look into getting, uh, if you're really allergic to it, um, I might like look into the cartridge ones. I have the RZ mask that I use a lot and it has carbon filters in it, charcoal filters, and it works really well. Um, but I think if you're really allergic to it, you might want to maybe look into one of the, with the big cartridges on it. I, and I, to be honest with you, I'm not sure if they work any better than it. right that's what i'm gonna see if brent will make one that just says 11 on it or i'll just I'll, i could just pencil it in there 11 it's always 11 <laughs> oh all right we'll just we'll just do the one one grit there and i'll take it off there and we got time for some questions or anything afterwards but yeah they're um um I don't know where I was going. Forgot where my wax went. Yeah. Th <laughs> Did somebody legitimately ask that? The Jing Jamie, that's not legitimate. It, I have no idea. Now, everybody picks on me about sanding and not knowing what the Jenga scale is. I swear, I've never heard of that. I think maybe those two guys made it up just to pick on me. I think I think what they they want is me to go into some demo and go, well, you know, this is a five on the Jenga scale, and everybody stare at me, and they have no idea. Jing. I uh, I believe I believe. Uh, yes, dust collections are awesome. Uh, air uh, filters for the shop um, work great. They're the ones that mount on the ceiling. Um, 
those work great. I have a, I can't remember what it is. I think it's maybe a Rikon is the one I have. It's outside, but we just bought a small Rikon um, uh, Sunday for the mobile shop too, that mounts on the wall, but we, it was on, you had to order it. So I haven't got that yet, but um, yes, they work fantastic um as far as turning they're not going to get rid of all of the shavings and everything you you still are going to have that but they'll get rid of the dust so we are about to remove the tenon right now that's a good question Right? Google's going crazy with the Jenga scale. The Jenga. Um, so the one we did in the demo, we held it with a vacuum chuck, but you can... Uh, also do it let's cut the bottom off here real quick and I'll you know what I'll show you how to do it without a vacuum chuck Chang. yeah isn't that a kajanka it's a game or jinga There we go. So we don't have much to clean up. Still have about the same thickness on the bottom. Let's get this out of here. And I'll, I will, uh, there you go. Rob, there's a, a pendant for you. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a pendant and, and a bottle stopper. All right, so this is just a little, <coughs> piece of maple we'll just use that as a little jam chuck there can you guys hear the dog barking another ambulance we we live in kind of like a retirement community so oh the kerplunk scale It, it's right up, right at the top of the Jenga. It's, it's not a, it's not a rough neighborhood. It's a retirement neighborhood, so it's not a good thing. It's not the convenience store getting robbed it's ouch that hurts Jamie <laughs> it it is and the the dog well one of the dogs Jack he just he loves it he gets it howls every time one goes by which is like five times a day <laughs> all right <laughs> right we haven't had that yet we haven't had them stop here yet i i am it's it's a countdown scott all right so there we go. We'll use that. This is the kitchen stuff you put in your drawers to uh, keep your silverware and things from sliding around. Hang on, let me pull the tailstock back up here. I know, Scott. Going downhill. Although, Scott, what are you talking about? You're going to be 52. So don't be giving me try. Crap. Scott's going to be 50 the month out right after me. 
Uh, yes, I've turned Holly Joe. It is beautiful wood to turn. If you get your hands on some Holly, take as much as you can. It turns great. There's a hospital here. Where do you think those ambulances are going? <laughs> the hospital uh, two blocks away. Well, it's more like an urgent care. Does what leave a stain on the wood? Oh, the the um um yes, J just a little bit. I just loosened up that pin so it didn't stick in there too far and pop a hole in the bottom of this thing. So just kind of, right? Maybe you and we should just move into the retirement home together and we can run it. We'll have, have those people whipped into shape in no time. <laughs> right? Go check Craigslist. <laughs> That's bad. All right. So there we go. I got it got it lined up pretty good. I'm going to turn it on kind of slow to just check it. It's a little bit off, but not, not bad at all. All right. We'll just clean the bottom of it up a little bit. Turn the speed up. I'm just going to have a... <laughs> oh. <laughs> you guys are mean. I'm... We're going to be on here in a couple of years, and I'm going to be turning a cane for myself. <laughs> right? It's like a whack you when you're walking by. Jeffrey, it's uh, walnut. Walnut, and we're just finishing it up. But I was, I was off center just a little bit. <laughs> All right, bump this back. Oh. Oh, that, that's awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. That's very cool. All right. I think we got enough room there. It's not too thin. Put a couple little grooves in it. It's uh, with a vacuum chuck, a little easier to do this. Because you can you can finish sanding the whole thing right there on the on the lathe on this you can have a little bit of hand sanding for that that center spot but but we'll uh, we'll hit it just a little bit. So, just put a couple little grooves in there, and like for stuff like this, for bowls and things, it's nice to, you know, be able to put a couple little detail lines in the bottom of it. And that way, you can sign it or put the date, what kind of wood it is, kind of thing. And it gives you a nice, nice spot to do it. So it's 
looks even. Do, do, do. Babinga? Have I ever turned Babinga? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I have or not. Um, that I don't know. Sorry. Babinga. Maybe. I've turned a couple little pieces of exotic stuff, but I, I'm getting up there in age like you guys have j just been mentioning, so I, I don't even remember. And then what I do for like a little nub like that, like I said, I would I would use the vacuum chuck so I could get get rid of that too. But if you don't have a vacuum chuck, take a Jacobs chuck, and like in, you can use one like this on the lathe, or you can take it over your drill press, put a little sanding pad on it, and you can get rid of that little nub really quick. All right, let me switch cameras back here real quick. There we go. Look at that. And the chat worked this week. Nice. Very nice. All right. Let's see. I don't think I have to measure it. It's exactly. Oh, right. It'd probably fall out. My false teeth. I'm going to need a bigger bowl for my chiclets. I'm probably going to have to have a set in the shop and a set in the house. I'll forget them. Uh, cleaning up the bottom of the bowl. Um, so a vacuum chuck is probably the best way to do it. Um, it just, you, you can sand it, finish it, sand it right there on the lathe. It's probably the easiest way to do it. So like this one here, uh, sorry. Um, uh, so I'm going to have to do, unless I put it back on, if you don't have a vacuum chuck, you're going to have to sand that down with a sanding pad or, you know, take a chisel, carve it out, and then sit there and hand sand it the whole, the whole time. So it's going to take you five times as long as if you had a vacuum chuck, you just stick it on there, turn the lathe on, and sand and finish it, and you're done. So, um, but if you don't have one, you, you can do it. It's just going to, going to take you a little bit longer. Um, I would, uh. Definitely, even though I have vacuum chuck, I leave the tail stock up there as long as I can, even when it's when it's on that vacuum chuck. That way, when I pull the vacuum chuck or pull the tail stock away, that little nub is all I have to make a couple of passes to clean that up and then sand sand and finish it. So I still keep that up there just for safety, just to make sure it's going to be all right. It's dusty, so. All right. Any uh? Oh, oh. Are there any questions before we take off? Um. Yeah. If you want to try one of those, it's uh. I don't know. I think it's pretty easy to do. Um. Like I said, if you uh, just just search a couple little spots, you can figure. Uh, it shows you how to make boxes out of them and things like that. And it has that little ring inside of it. Um, you can leave the bottom on it too, so there's points on the top and bottom. So uh, this one, yes, I did, and that is redwood, the pin holder on the wall. Um, it's redwood, and I turned that. Um, probably shortly after I started doing videos. I, I've had that hanging on the wall even in the old shop for years now. The uh, podcast is Woodturners Anonymous. And we will... Braxton has been working a ton of overtime. So with that and, in, and what happened to, with Jason and his wife, um, it's just kind of put everything on hold until we till we can get get back to it but we will everything will settle down i'm sure soon and then you know 
we'll get get going again. Who makes my boots? Carolina. Carolina boots. Carolina shoe. Uh, can I do a video on what? Oh, that? Oh, it's it's just a cup. There's nothing. Um, I just hollowed out a, I don't know if you can see it. I just hollowed out a piece of redwood and drill the hole in the back of it and put a screw in it. That's that's all it is. There's nothing. Yeah, but it's, yeah, um, it's, it, I don't know. It's basically about five inches tall and about maybe four inches around and I just, just hollowed out the inside and then, then drilled a hole in, in the side of it to screw it up. But um, yeah, I don't know if we have anything similar to that, but it's, it's kind of it's not, not a whole lot to it. Um, um, I'm trying to think. Oh, one more thing before we go. Like I said in the beginning, um, so the video will be up on the Q&A channel if you came in late or wanted to see something or if you missed something. And so it'll be up on there probably tomorrow. And I will put a little intro in the beginning of it explaining to everybody what it, what it was. I had, had a lot of people not understanding that the chat's still moving and it's not live anymore, so we decided to put them up on the, on the Q&A, but it will be over there. Um, I don't, do you have a link to the Q&A Robin can throw up there in the chat? What, I used the Easy Wood Chuck. That's the one I have had for, for years now. It's the quick release one where you just pop the jaws out just like that. Okay, maybe uh, maybe J Jamie, can you throw a link to the Q and A channel up there? All right. Yeah, you don't have to log out. But anyway, um, um. Yep, that's the truck. We will, uh, the mobile shop is, it's driving me nuts. I hate sitting around doing nothing. And it's driving me crazy. The windows still haven't got here yet. And we were hoping to like already be on the road with this thing. We were hoping to have the wrap all done by now. Um, but I still, he still hasn't called and said that, that we're getting ready to install them. I want to go out and film a little bit of that. Um, so it's driving me crazy and it's out of my control. <laughs> so as soon as, as soon as they get the windows, we'll go out and film that and then we'll be on the road shortly after that. So I'm, I don't know. I'm going to call him again tomorrow, but it's, I don't know. It's nothing I can do about it. So I just have to keep working and hopefully they get them in here soon and we'll be we'll be moving. So anyway. All right. All right. Well, if there's not any more questions, I'm going to take off, get some dinner and you guys have a great rest of the week. And uh, like I said, we're going to do that, that uh, Beauty and the Beast project. Uh, we're going to do a little Lichtenberg burning with that too. So it should be fun, fun, quick little project. All right. Ooh. Hang on, Rob. Uh, somebody heard I was going to do a lidded box on a scroll saw. No, that's, that's, you heard wrong, Sterling. And sorry about that meme I put up on you earlier, but it was the only one I could think of for the South. And I know it's not the South, but it was very fitting. <laughs> um, I know I need to do a scroll saw project. Uh, you know what? I lived in Fort Rucker, Alabama for a couple of years when I was very, very young. I mean, just, just way young, like five, that young, little, Fort Rucker, Alabama. 
Do you know where that is? Anyway. But yes, we will eventually be out with the mobile shop. And yes, we will come to Alabama. Uh. All right. All right, guys. You have a good one. Have a good rest of the week. And we'll talk to you soon. Um, got a couple pieces from Scott Grove back. Let me show you those real quick. That that uh, I turned these this summer when we were doing doing the demos. I turned a platter for him and this bowl. And I can't remember what kind of wood that is. But anyway, I gave them to him. He took them home, decorated them. And we're going to do a giveaway. So I just put a picture up on the Instagram of that. That one right there. If you go to um, like look up Scott Grove or Imagine Inlay, um, he has a YouTube video showing how he made that. He used bottle rockets. He suited up in his suit, welding helmet on, held onto this way. He shot a thousand bottle rockets at it to make all those little burns and everything in it. So it's pre pretty cool. Anyway, so he just sent these to me, and so we're going to do a giveaway with these two pieces, too. And we'll do it, do that on uh, Instagram. But, all right. All right, guys. Have a good one. And if you have any more questions, um, just always leave them down below in the comments of the videos. Or, like I said before, this one will be up on the Q&A if you want to check it out later on. All right. See ya.